Okay, shalom, shalom. Kwam yasha Allah. Koholoyim la. Yahweh bashim yahweh shai. Bahashim rakahakodash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth. And just want to say the water to all the Akim and Akwaf. That's out here sincerely keeping the laws, the statutes, and commandments of Yahweh bashim yahweh shai. To the best of their ability. This is Yahweh Nawaf. Just coming at you with another quick lesson. Praying that it's edifying by the Spirit. And, um,. Just wanted to do this quick lesson. Uh, you know, when I do, normally see stories like this and you just see the way that people go, you know, go or they, the way that they, you know, pass away, so to speak. And, and you know, being into this truth, it, it, it really resonates. You know, it's like, you know, wow, the Lord is serious, man. <laughs> For real, he is serious. Um, now, these, as you can see, these kids right here, this is the mom. But these are the kids. Now check out how these kids passed away or went, right? It says, Mom Susie Dudas reveals trauma of living through every parent's nightmare after both her children, age seven and nine, died in friend's swimming pool when their scuba tanks were filled with helium instead of oxygen. That That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, uh, just, just that whole setup. You know, so I, I'm not sure how they mixed all that up. Maybe the, the um this friend, you know, that had those tanks. Man, you know, when people have, you know, they be doing all kinds of stuff, man. Helium tanks, probably blowing up down balloons, blowing up um certain um you know uh uh you know water balloons and things of that nature. You know, shit, the flotation devices and stuff like that. So maybe they you know grabbed up the wrong shit. But anyway, the thing of it is, is they they out of here. From what a person would say, well, that's a common um, or honest mistake, or that was an accident. But we know that, you know, by the scriptures, we understand that, that you know, that's Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Um, I had that scripture up, but this is, uh, let me go and get. Well, first, of all, let's get this on First Samuel. I think that's what it is, First Samuel 2. And verse 6, it says, um, the Lord, Yahweh, killeth and maketh the lie. He brings down to the grave and bringeth up. So from this scripture, and there's plenty of other pre precepts, which we can get one more before I go into the story. Deuteronomy 32 and 39, you can clearly see that it's the Lord that kills and he makes a lie. Now this one right here, it says, um, Deuteronomy 32 and 39, see now that I even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill, and I make alive. I wound, and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. So if the Lord wants you to die, it's no way of escaping that. You can't get out of it. As a matter of fact, that was what um, I kind of had up here at first. Ecclesiastes 8 and 8. It says, There is no man that hath power over the spirit to retain the spirit. Neither hath he power in the day of death, and there is no discharge in that war. Neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. See? Let me see how it reads in the NLT. It says, none of us can hold back our spirits from departing. None of us has the power to prevent the day of our death. And hey, that's perfect. That's a perfect. That's, that's, that's a good um, translation. There is no escaping that obligation, that dark battle. And in the face of death, wickedness will certainly not rescue the wicked. Good translation. Anyway, though, but you can see that it's nothing you can do if the Lord wants you out of here. You've done. It's a lot. It says a Florida mother is still fighting for justice following the bizarre and tragic drowning deaths of her two children in April 2021. So... You can clearly see, okay, from there, she wants revenge, basically. She wants justice for her children, you know, um, instead of taking it as a the so-called accident that they're saying it is. Susie Dudas, 47, lost her daughter. Zell, 9, and son Saxon, 7, after they had gone uh, with their father to his friend's house to play in the swimming pool one Friday afternoon. So she wants that revenge from the father, basically. And, you know, a lot of parents, man, they look, they use those children against, you know, the father, you know, or, or mother. She'll use those children against that, that dad real cold. And, hey, 
me speaking as a man, I mean, you just never know, man. The Lord could have just said, well, all right, well, hey, you ain't going to be able to use them kids as a pawn no more. Anyway, because she, <laughs> man, boy, the Lord is cold. Okay, but it says, um, the pair's parents are both accomplished scuba divers. So they both were scuba divers. They knew, I'm sure, I'm sure certain the kids know how to swim. It says, while at the friend's house, the children got their hands on tanks that contain 100% helium rather than a typical mix of gas and oxygen that divers use. That's the Lord, man, said that was the setup right there. As a result, as the children went under the water, they lost consciousness. Their father, who was working with his friend at the time of the tragedy, rescued them from the water and initiated CPR. He called Dudas and the children. He called, okay, he called the wife and the children were rushed to the hospital. The children were pronounced dead four days later on April 27th, 2021. So you know she's scorned. She probably, you know, says you can't put it into words. The upset, the anger, the disbelief, the guilt that you weren't here for your children, that you allow it to happen. But no, she wasn't, you know, she didn't allow nothing to happen. There wasn't nothing she could do about it. It says that she helped them to get into bathing suits. You know, the, you know, so she she helped them to get dressed. And she basically, like, you know, she basically helped them to their demise. And, and that, the Lord will use you in that way. <laughs> you know, she probably got up, made them their favorite pancakes and shit, you know, orange juice. You know what I'm saying? Kissed them goodbye as they jumped out of the car because, they, you know, they, they, these parents are separated. It says, speaking about the moment that she received a phone call from her estranged husband. See, there you go. Who she divorced in 2020. See, she divorced him, you know. And you're typical with an American woman, you know, they were able to initiate that damn divorce. It says, um, yeah, I guess she, all she could hear him say, you know, start CPR. The West Palm Beach-based um, farmer said that she knew something was strange when she saw that her ex-husband was calling her as the pair rarely speak on the phone. See? I mean, if you got children, I, I, I get it if you got another man and this, that, and the third, but still them children, man, still got to, you got to talk. You got to speak it out, man. You know what I'm saying? When there's a mother and father involved, there's children involved with a divorce. Hey, that's why women are supposed to just be with one man. When they get with that one man, he's supposed to be with that man until he dies. <laughs> you know, because when it comes to children, baby mamas, baby daddies, baby drama, and all this other shit, man, that shit is, is, a, is a real... That shit is like a a, a, a a pandemic. It's like a plague in, in America and all over the world now. To be the so-called blacks, you know, we used to be under those curses. But now those curses are starting to fall back on Esau. Okay, it says, um, I hung up and I called my friend who owned the house. I told her my children are drowning in her pool and to call 911. Then I just started driving. I knew, but I didn't want to accept. It was unreal. To see how dilated my children's eyes were. They didn't even look like themselves. Whew. Authorities in the Sunshine State announced in May 2022 that no criminal charges will be brought in the case that this, the state attorney's office called the deaths a heartbreaking um, tragedy. So the case is pretty is over with. But look at the look at the mom. She 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 wants justice, man. Even going as far as you know, of course she wants to send on that you know her ex husband to jail. She wants that motherfucker to fry. <laughs> it says the office noted in the report that the children went unsupervised into the pool. In the wake of the decision, Dudas has tried to take matters into her own hands. See that, and has launched a social media campaign to draw attention to the case. Dudas regularly updates her TikTok page. Now this happened back in. See. Okay, so May 2022. Okay, it's been a sec, but it ain't been that long, long. Okay, uh, Dudas regularly updates to her TikTok page, Justice for Zell and Saxon, and with new developments on the case. There is also a GoFundMe page that is raising money to keep her farm open for visits from school children. Yeah, yeah. At the time of the decision, the children's outraged uncle, Chuck Dudas, which is, you know, of course, her brother, more than likely got to be her brother, said in the interview with WPTV that there were still too many questions for the case to be considered closed. How the children, I mean, you know, these people have done investigation. You know, these people ask all the damn questions. How the children end up in unsupervised 
end up unsupervised in a swimming pool with a scuba tank that wasn't even filled with air. That, to me, isn't just a happenstance circumstance, he told the station. Okay, but you don't think that they asked all them questions? They probably asked all them questions a, a thousand fucking times. Because they you, you already know them. They probably looking at the dad like, shit, oh, you know, you and your, 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 your ex-wife had a terrible breakup or whatever. She divorced me. Ain't no telling her. She probably divorced his ass to be with somebody else. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> but, you know, of course... When it comes to a divorce and breakup and when it comes to children um, and parents sharing custody of children and something like that happens, the very first people that become suspects kind of are the parents or the people that's closer when it comes to, you know, like insurance policies. They're going to check into all that shit. Did you, you know, did they have insurance on them? Um, how quick or oh, you just got insurance on them um, like uh, last year? What You know, anyway, you know, of course, they're going to ask the mom. Everybody around them, they're going to interview everybody. Well, was he abusive to the children? Was, did he ever put his hands on the children? they checking all into the records, you know, as far as, like, have the police ever been even called to your house for domestic violence? You know, and what was the case? You know, all that stuff. So, you know, I already know. You know what I'm saying? It just so happened, you know what I'm saying, that your, dis- your undisciplined-ass kids went and done something, basically, that they shouldn't have done, more likely. Instead of just going ahead and getting on in the pool. You know, because what kind of pool, how deep in the damn pool are you trying to go that you need a school? you in a pool. It's not talking like they was at the beach and they took the boat by themselves or something and they, you know, went out. You know, hey, hey, come on, bro. Anyway, but of course, you know, uh, this is how they think about their children, man. But see, and what's going to happen, and see, you know, when you just think about a woman that's thinking about her kids like this to the point where she'll take it there. Just think about what the Lord is going to do about his children, the children of Israel, the apple of his eye. When, 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 when shit hits the fans, man, just think about what the Lord is going to do, how the Lord is about to destroy. And, 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 and it's going to be billions of people probably, man, that's going to get the business. It's going to be a lot of death, man, um, um, you know, coming soon. We pray. We're praying for the coming of our Lord, man, but it's going to be a lot. If this right here is nothing, you know what I'm saying? But just think about how upset and hurt that she is that she's you know got a gofundme page going with a um updating a damn tiktok page you know what i'm saying and, and she's gonna carry this to you know she's updating the tiktok page probably hiring them and a private investigators and all kinds of shit man but you know she ain't gonna let that up because i'm sure she probably hated the guy to begin with didn't want the children to go she probably you know what i'm saying had to let them go because they got you know um you know, as far as the custody, whatever the arrangement may have been. Anyway, it says, Dudas told newspaper in a separate interview that her children's father was showing his friend how to use an underwater scooter that he developed. In that interview, Dudas echoed some of her brother's statements. I am an experienced scuba diver, so I don't understand. They were given a scuba tank full of helium. I can understand how one child bre- uh, breathes off it. But how do both of my children die? See, my kids were water bugs. I mean, they were very strong swimmers. I, I knew it. I ain't even read this far into it. My children didn't sneak to the pool before they were supposed to, and they didn't stumble upon a scuba tank and start playing with it. She went on, speaking about her social media campaign. Well, maybe they didn't. You know what I'm saying? Who knows, man? Esau would be doing the thing. Esau don't give a fuck. Shit. Dude just said that they that she has found a therapeutic found it therapeutic to interact with other grieving parents and that's what it is i mean you know instead of just going ahead and grieving yourself and because you you know when you get with other grieving parents you ain't gonna never stop grieving basically it says um surprisingly it's been helpful to share it online and to connect with other people i didn't know how much i'd feel like sharing some of the of the harder and deeper feelings but i think it's as useful or maybe harder than any therapy that I've gone through. The comments are hard at times. Some days I can read through them and I appreciate the outpouring of support that people are offering. Many have shared their own stories of grief and there's so many connections to make, she said. See, she's not mentioning the fact that, okay, let's see, let's check out a couple of comments in here. Because I'm sure people going in them comments like, hey, you know, it's an accident. You got to just give it up, you know, whatever, whatever. She don't want to hear that shit. 
This person says, I agree the children were unsupervised, but I don't understand where the mother is coming from. Why is she starting to go, uh, GoFundMe for her farm? That's what I was thinking, too. So kids can have a place to stay safely. I'm, I'm, sore, I'm sorry she lost her kids, but I'm not feeling her. Hmm. Says those kids probably helped out a lot on that farm and now has to pay for the help because the, the work has to be done. I might be wrong, but I just th just a thought farms are a lot of work. Well, yeah, they are. You know, and generally, you know, that's why a lot of there was a lot of children being born back in the days. You know what I'm saying? You know, when people done a lot of farming, it was nothing for a family, you know, to have 15, 16, damn 20 damn children to work that farm. man. these days, you know, Esau don't want you having no damn children. This person says, yeah, it sounds like the adults were too lazy to watch the kids around the pool. So someone gave them tanks and in a hurry so they can get back to doing whatever it was they were doing. That could be the case. Yeah. Yeah, she got a gang of money. Shit, this saying a, a GoFundMe for a farm she already had and they $800,000. Damn. Everyone always tries to get rich from a death. It's sad. Damn. 800,000. Well, anyway, you see what it is. But we know that, you know, the scriptures talks about, you know, um, the Lord, man. So, in Hebrews 8, I'm um, 10 and 31. <laughs> It says it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. See? And I'm going to tell you, man, water is scary. Water is real scary. Um, I remember when I first learned how to swim. And, the, and pretty much the reason, yeah, the reason why I learned how to swim. <laughs> and I've told this story before, um, you know, doing lessons. But um, I, was, I was young. I lived in the South. Um, we had went up to a creek. And um, everybody was there. It was kind of, I don't know, it was maybe one of those holidays or something. But it was like, it used to be back ways to the creek. You could drive up to the creek and they had like the big ass rope on a tree. You know, you swing out there, you know, and splash over into the water. But it was a pretty fairly quick moving creek. But it was kind of, you know, subtle, slow, you know, but it was a nice creek. And, you know, I was on one of those inner tubes. One of those big ass inner tubes, like a track. They call them tractor type. Well, that's what it was. That's back when tires used to have actual inner tubes in them. And it was like one of those big tractor tire inner tubes. And I was holding on to it. I'm just sitting there. Nothing going on. Wasn't even moving. Sitting there. You know what I'm saying? And they have, I'm not sure what to call, but it's it's a it's like an underwater whirlwind. You know, it's like a um like a um cyclone, so to speak. But they flow underwater from the current. So, you know, you can't see them. So when it, when it, you know, it, it wrapped around my feet and my legs and, and I just went to spinning. And I went to spinning and spinning. I spent out. And then next thing you know, I was gone. I was just, you know, going down the, um, the creek. And, and all my people was just looking, you know, screaming and shit. You know what I'm saying? And um, it was nothing they could do. You know what I'm saying? Because they couldn't catch up to it like that, you know. And I don't even know if the hell if any of them could swim because nobody jumped in there. But I know I was passing stuff because, you know, it was kind of like certain spots. It was houses off of it. But it was certain the creek was, you know, went into another county and all that other stuff. So it was other ways you can get into it. And just so happened. It was a a, a guy that lived up, you know. You know, the country, you know what I'm saying? He lived down away from us, you know what I'm saying? And, and he saw me. As a matter of fact, he was in the same grade I was, but it was like back then, you know, in the South, you know, you have like those 18 year olds that, you know, just would never pass the grade and they were, you know, like stuck in seventh grade. So I went to school, you know, when I was in seventh grade, it was about that time too, but I was about seventh grade or so when that happened. Um, and, you know, one of these guys, you know, it was kind of like six or seven guys that was in our school that just never made it to high school and they just kept flunking and flunking and flunking and until the parents start complaining about them old niggas being around their they kids. But well, he was one of those kids <laughs> where I could say grown man because he was grown as hell. And he seen me and he, um, hello, shoe, you know, he said my name. You all right? And, he, you know, he jumped off in there. You know what I'm saying? And swam out there and he got me. And that's, you know, the following day. 
I went to the um I went to the swimming pool and 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 um took up swimming lessons. And I went every day, you know what I'm saying? I think swimming lessons was like a quarter back then, you know. And um you know, I pay my quarter in the morning. It was like 2 hours session or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And I go and I learn how to swim and then from there shit, I stayed in the pool. You know, I learned how to dive cuz I was in the gymnastics and all that little stuff like that later on and you know, but shit, I mean, that's how I learned how to swim, but that water scary as shit cuz I was scared as shit. I'm not going to front. So I can't even imagine like even during the flood, you know, um, the, you know, the, the, the terror that the Lord placed on them. You know what I'm saying? But that was a terror from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh But guess what? He he got me through it. And that's something that I could, you know, can can think back on and be thankful for. You know what I'm saying? Like the Lord is in control, man. He got it. So if he wants you to live, you're going to live. If he wants you to die, you're going to die. And that's that. And that's what's coming up with this. um These end days, man, and what's going to happen. You know, that's why we pray that we're part of the hopeful elect. You know, we pray that the Lord will not take away his Holy Spirit from us and that we understand that the lot that we have, it's nothing we can do about the lot that we have because it's going to be some of the men of the Lord that's going to be beheaded. Some are going to be martyred. You know, some are going to just, you know, see the Lord come back. Some are going to see this, this, the um, the chariots, the ships, what they call UFOs. It's going to be some some of our people going to be beamed up and actually be here to, to for that to happen to them. So we don't know our lot, man. But in the meanwhile, that's kind of the reason why it's just, you know, to, to not be fearful. I seen a brother, he done a lesson today on not being fearful. So, you know, man, you know, I mean, <laughs> it's nothing you can do. If you're going to fear anything, you better be fearing Yahweh about Shemi was shy. You better not be fearing nothing above him. That's for sure. <laughs> just straight up, man. But, hey, man, the Lord took her kids away from her. With the very thing that she loved. You see what I'm saying? The very thing that, you know, the husband may have loved. But anyway, I just seen this story and I'm like, wow, man. Hey, man, the way the Lord get down, man, it's like, how could you helium instead of oxygen? And you just, the Lord just set it up for them to just grab those particular tanks. And out of there, just like that, man. So the Lord, man, there's no respect to a person, man. Y'all better repent. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you are the true Hebrew Israelites. Hey, we're living in the last days. You know, instead of a flood this time, the Lord is going to destroy this place with fire, man. These Americas, Babylon the Great, you know, it's going to be some great destruction that's going to come to this planet, man. So, and it's all because of people just wicked as hell, man. People are wicked, man. The Lord is about to, you know... <laughs> He about to do a work on this place, man. Matter of fact, let me get this. Let me see real quick. I end out here, Salakia. That Psalms 107. I like to read through the Psalms, too, because it shows you so much about the Lord. You know what I'm saying? And it also gives you hope. It's that these are prayers as well. Um, but this is, uh, yeah, it's a lot of beauty in that one. 33. Check it out. Um, verse 33, it says, He turneth rivers into wilderness and the water springs into dry ground, a fruitful land into barrenness for the wickedness of them that dwell therein. So this, you know, America used to be fruitful and it still somewhat got a little bit of something to it. But, you know, this place is destroyed already. But I mean, you know, the Lord is going to bring this place to a complete fall because of the wickedness that's in it. You see, this place is completely wicked, man. It says a fruitful land and to barrenness for the wickedness of them that dwell therein. You see, he's bringing this place to barrenness right now because the place is so damn wicked. So when he decides to bring that final, final thing through, man, 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 I can't even imagine, bro. When a missile star coming and all that other shit like that, man. And, you know, scriptures talks about how the righteous shall scarcely be saved. Man, it's going to be people shitting in their pants, boy, pissing. and going to be having heart attacks on the spot. Motherfuckers going to be shook, man. You see, people just chilling right now. They, they, you know, they don't understand real terror. And the Lord is the king of terrors, man. He's going to bring that real terror. That's just like this lady. Can you imagine her? She get there. She running up. And, and, and she see her kids there. She like, they ain't even look like themselves because of the dilation of their eyes and shit. And you can, I can just imagine, you know, like that fear because it said the kids died four days later. So, you know, just that whole, them, them three to four days of just praying, 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 the white Jesus and nothing happened. And then all of a sudden the doctor walks out and tell you, eh, you know, they're gone. It's over with. That's a wrap. 
Them, them days had been terrifying, man. Terrible. Them, you know, the Lord will bring real grief upon you, man. So I just wanted to touch on that, man. With that, I pray that the lesson was edifying. Call me, inshallah.